Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. Today I'm in our technical lab at our UK hub in Chatterton, Manchester. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with the software. Let's launch the software. Now, if you've already got it installed, you'll have these two icons. If you haven't, you need to go to the Progeny website, progeny.co.uk, uh, go to Downloads, uh, go to Doors Enterprise, and then download the version you're working on. So I'm using only a P4 controller, so I would use version 8.1. So download the software, install it, and then we're, we're ready to go. On the desktop, you have the um, software itself, uh, the enterprise software, and the server. So first things first, click on the server, start the server. And that has the server running in the background now. So it enables the SQL server. Next, we need to start the software. And as you can see, it tells you its default password, so let's enter that. Again. So what we have to do is create, first of all, a, a connector. A connector is the, the device that you're going to use to connect doors to the software. So let's add a connector and we'll call it um, connector. What type of connector is it? Are you doing it on the USB serial connection or is it going to be um, a LAN, a UDP connection? I'm doing, doing mine over the local area network and a LAN connection. So that's my connection there. Nothing else to worry about. Apply that. And there we go, we have a connector. Next, we need to go to doors. And then we're going to add a new door. So at the top there, where it says add a new door, we can click on that. That brings up a, a new window. Um, we need to give it a door name. So we'll call it door one. And it also asks you for the controller address. So if you look at your controller that you've got there, at the top of the controller, it gives you, uh, on, like a, on a red sticker, you have the, um, the serial numbers just below a barcode. So I'll put my controller address in, which is 499335. That's my um, controller address. Then it asks you what connector are you using, which connector are you going to use. So it's quite simple for me. I have the connector, connector, and then it's going to ask what's the IP address. On the controller itself, I'll show this in another video. But in the, in, on the controller itself, you can actually use the key, onboard keypad to set an IP address for your controller. So I'm just going to type in the address because I know it off the top of my head. One nine two. One six eight one one five two. So that's the address of my um, my controller. So that's the device added, the controller added with its IP address. What we can also do is format the readers. So what type of readers are we having there? Um, I'm going to. I'm fortunate. I know that the reader one on mine is a crystal reader the latest reader. I've also got another reader connected on my test um, device and it's a 26-bit uh, Wigand reader. Because the readers are intelligent in Progeny, you can affect changes like the, the beep volume. So I'm going to put mine fairly low at three and the background, I don't need a particular light. So I'm going to save a bit of energy um, by setting those values low. With a HID format, th there's no there's no input, you leave a beep or they don't. So that's the um, the door set up with its serial number, its IP address and the connector it's using. That's the reader set up. Um, I'm using a crystal reader, uh, a HID reader. So there my that's my door formatted and set up. Click apply and OK. And that's the door added now. Um, the door's online, it's ready to go. At the bottom there you can see there's my connector and it's showing the doors online, um, it's given the status of it and it, tell, it tells me which version firmware I've got as well. So you can see the, the device is added and it's ready to go.
Okay, so that's with um, one door added, and and if you were just adding that door to an existing system, that's really all you would need to do. Most of the admins already done for you. Um, but if this was a new system, you're just in a one door system, you need to create some other changes. So let's go to calendars first of all, up on the on left navigation, and then at the top underneath where it says ADI calendars, in your case it might say your customer's site and calendars. Click on add new calendar, give it a name. That's the, the date range where it's applied. You can add or delete days when they, which apply. So for instance, if people won't be coming in on the 1st of January because it's a bank holiday and the 2nd because it's a bank holiday, highlight those days, click apply and then okay to that. That's the calendar with holidays now applied. Then we would go to time zones and left click, add a new time zone or at the top, add a new time zone. Let's give it a name. Let's call it um, daytime. Um, the calendar we're going to use would be the one we just created, calendar. The days when people can get in. Well, no, let's say it's um, Monday through to Saturday, 9 till 5. Let's change that to 9.30. That's when people are allowed through the door. Which calendar does it apply to? This one here. The one we just created, apply. And that's the time zone created. Click OK. And then finally, uh, access levels. So click on access levels. You can see there's already a, a sample access level there. So what the access level does is it dictates when people, which doors people are allowed through. Now we've only got the one door system, so we could just leave it as all doors. But let's show an example. So you can go to access levels, left click. It's actually right click. Add the new um, access level. Let's give it a name of staff. Um, allow access during time. This is the time zone we just set up, so 9 till 5, uh, Monday through to Saturday. Which door does this apply to? Door 1. Apply that. Click OK. And there we are. We have a staff access level added to the system now. Then let's go to Card Manager. Um, toward the top, in the middle, where it says Add New Card. Click on that opens up a new window and what we can do with this is create a create a card holder and um, so the two ways there's three ways of doing it actually you can scan a token at the door at door one and present a card at the reader you can use a desktop enrollment device which i haven't got which is simply a usb device or if you want to you can put a card number in if it's a, a crystal card so i'm just going to make a number up it's not biometric, I'm not using fingerprints. The card would be ADI, last name, global. This card is enabled. Um, access levels, which tools have they, which um, access level have they got? So we're going to say that they're staff only, they're only allowed in. If you remember, Monday through to Saturday, 9 till 5. Um, click OK. Apply that user and then click OK. Give it a second or two. And there we go. That's the card added to the system. Just a, a little bit of information before we finish this video. Having set all the parameters in, you might need to send them to the controller if it doesn't work automatically. So at the at the bottom of the system tree there on the left, you have control panel. If you click on that and then go to update hardware. You can see at the top there, update hardware wizard. Click on that and it will create a wizard for you. So you click next, the site, ADI, the door, the door one, connection is through connector. Click next, add the data that you want to send over, the time and the date, the configuration and credentials fobs. Click next, click finish. 
and that will send the information through to the controller and that's it it's as quick as that really it's not uh, it's not a particularly long process if you at the bottom very bottom corner where it says OK you click on that icon and it shows you the connector that we created before and it shows you the um, devices that are connected to it and you can see here that I've got a live update there's no, no outstanding problems with it um, and the device is ready to go other than that the the other thing to check is if you go to your system tray at the bottom um, you can select the server now where's mine there it is those enterprise server um, click on properties properties and it shows you the active connectors so if there are any problems on the systems that run in you can simply left click click start you can see mine's responding it's online but if there were any problems and it wasn't connecting or there was an issue you can also start the SQL server that way as well thanks very much for watching all the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website links are below don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.